Uh, Turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter 17. The book of Luke, chapter 17. And uh, as I'm going to read, I want you to turn there because I'm going to read some some verses here. I'm going to read another verse uh, that we have. I think it's uh, uh, very important that... uh, we understand. I'm going to read a verse out of, you're going to stay at Luke 17. I'm going to read a verse out of First John, and that will be chapter 5. And we uh, read this recently. It says, now this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, give me another word for will. Word, right? If we ask anything according to his word, now you got to know his word to ask according to it. You got to know it. If we ask anything according to his word, he hears us. There's nothing there about maybe, might, when he feels like it. It says he hears us. Amen. That's what happens. He hears us. And if we know that he hears us whatsoever we ask, then we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. We know that we have those petitions granted because of we ask. So number, the number one thing that we must understand is that there ought to be a confidence in us that when we ask, his word is true. Amen? Now, there's a lot of things that goes on, and people uh, make excuses. Yeah, I, I know that, and uh, uh, we ask, and we, uh, we look at it, but really nothing happens. You know, people that don't really walk with God, they're born again, but don't really walk with God and they're all, and they fail to receive different things. That kind of living and that kind of faith spreads on people. In essence, well, God didn't do it for them. He may not do it for me. What we've got to have is a spirit of faith and confidence that God is God, regardless of what situation, you know, uh, we can't treat church like the gym. That's the Y, the gym, or whatever you go to. Preble County has the Y. There may be some other little gyms in there. If you go to the gym every morning and you work out, but you still eat junk food every day, that gym is not doing anything for you. So if you really want to work out and get into shape, you go to the gym, you get your cardiovascular worked out, you go ahead and uh, you get your muscles right, but you still have to eat right. You still have to do things physically right for the whole package to work. So in essence, you can't just come to church and say, well, I've been to the gym. It's what you do at home that makes a difference in your life. Let me say that again. You can't just treat church, even if you come to three services a week. You still have to eat right, spiritually. You still have to talk right, spiritually. You still have to do something about your belief system, spiritually speaking. So just because we tend church doesn't guarantee us to walk in strong faith. I believe God wants us all to be at a place when we get news that is not, that is, that comes that uh, things may pierce our heart, as I did with my brother, but we don't have to panic because God's really God. Amen? We don't have to panic because God is really God. And so when we understand how this works, then we can understand that, uh, that everything he said is true. Amen? Everything he said is true, and he will perform that which, that which he promised are now provided for us. So... Going back to what I quoted earlier in my prayer, that uh, he that cometh to God must believe that God is. So God is what? Healer? Is he still healer? Is God still provider? God still the God of provision? Can God lie? No. So if God can't lie, can his word lie? It can't lie. It can't lie. So based upon this, the confidence that we have in him, I wasn't going to go all the way this far because I want to talk about increase something of our belief system. If this is the confidence that we have in him, whatever we ask, we know we receive. Whatever. And that's what he said in the same author, same book. The same author and the same book, he says this. 
in chapter 3, verse 20, if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts and knows all things. Beloved, if our hearts does not condemn us, we have confidence towards God. This is the confidence that we have in him. So however you live, you got to live where your heart is not always messing with you. But it's solid with God. Amen? See, when you know to live right, there's a confidence. It's not that you're perfect. Let's get out of the mindset of being perfect. We're perfect spiritually. Our spirit has been born again in perfection by Jesus Christ. There's no birth defects in the born again spirit, right? We've said that. That means my spirit, no matter how many birth defects I may have had naturally, when I got born again, the inner man was born again without any birth defects at all. He's right. He's created in the image of God. That is the thing I like. So I'm not going to let my heart condemn me. And whatsoever we ask, we, the redeemed, Whatsoever we ask, we receive. Well, I ask and never do receive. Whatsoever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments. We don't just go to the gym and work out. We do everything else that's supposed to go along with that. We keep his commandments. What's his commandments? His word. And do those things that are pleasing in his sight. We do those things that pleasing that please him. We do those things that are pleasing in his sight. We do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Now, without faith, it's impossible to. So what pleases God? Faith stuff. So what is faith stuff? Believing, speaking, confessing. That's faith stuff. Because we do those things that are pleasing in his sight. What we got to do is continue to do things that rewards us he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him does it say casually seek him what would diligent be if somebody had to define the word diligent what would it be with much purpose that's good tenacity amen i i i like the word purpose because you you diligently do it on purpose intentional I do it with on purpose with intention intention amen what do you say consistent those who consistently consistently you know inconsistent that doesn't get you anywhere angel asked me today have you taken your vitamins not for about two or three weeks well that kind of consistency doesn't help you naturally or spiritually amen we got to stay consistent and that's what it's all about and it's, that's not works that's just being consistent with god amen that's like telling your kid i want you to start keep keeping your room clean all right and they say i did it for a week it's not a week consistency when you do it week in and week out amen that's consistent that's consistent you know, I remember when I went to the dentist years ago. I haven't had to have a tooth filled in I don't know how many years. But I went to the dentist, and uh, he asked me, do you ever floss? I said, I've done that a time or two. He says, I can tell. Because your gums are not all that healthy. So I said, well, I'll start doing that. Oh, see, she's saying. And you know, from that day to now, I've been consistent, consistent, consistent. Like never miss a day. Like, a day. like if I fall asleep, I wake up at two o'clock, I still do it before I go to back to bed. <laughs> Honestly, consistent. Why? Because, because they showed you a picture of what gums look like if you don't take care of them. Whoo, I didn't like those pictures. I didn't like that. You know, there's things that you got to do. Uh, people's spiritual life doesn't look good when they're not consistent with God. And God wants us to be consistent. Amen. He wants us to be consistent. Coming to church should never be something that irritates it. It ought to be something that sets us free. 
Now I go, and we just there a couple weeks ago. And she says, uh, I can tell you floss because I clean your whole teeth and not, never get blood. You have healthy gums. Healthy come from being consistent. Amen. So that's, it works naturally and it works spiritually. Amen. Hallelujah. I buy floss five and six packs at a time. <laughs> Cinnamon. No, consistency is the key. Naturally and spiritually. That's what it's about. Now, I told you to go to Luke. That was my text, right? I just had to go to a side journey there. Amen. Had to be like me saying, Angel, let's go look at this. But I, I want to show you this first. Take her down a couple streets first, you know. All right. In Luke chapter 17, I'm still not there. I got a marker there, though. Here's some things that happened. Let me read verse 1. And then we're going to go down to verse 5. And Jesus said to his disciples, everything after this is going to be written in red for a few minutes. Verse 1, he said to his disciples, it is impossible that no one, that no one, that no offense should come. But woe to him through whom they do come. It would be better for him if a millstone, a millstone, some of them millstones are pretty big. A millstone were hung around his neck and were thrown into the sea, then that he should offend one of these little ones. A millstone is the stones they take when they grind mill. They, they grind corn mill and grind it to powder. Big stones. I've been to those in the south, those big grist mills. Those stones are massive. Now, that stone may not be the size of that. It may be the size he's talking about. But once it's hung around your neck, you're not getting out. You're forever there. Take heed yourself if your brother sin against you. Anybody ever had anybody mistreat them bad? Sin against you? Never. Never. If your brother sin against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. Don't, it didn't say keep rebuking. It says you, you got a right to bring it to his attention. But when, if he repents, do what? Forgive him. Amen. And if, and if he sins against you seven times a day, and seven times in a day return to, return to you saying, I repent, you should what? Huh, not that you lying devil. You said that you're not going to do this and you keep doing it, forget it. No, if he, if, if he does this seven times a day and comes back and says, I'm sorry seven times a day, you're supposed to do what? Forgive. forgive. Now, I understand not everybody says I'm sorry. It's a byword to some people. They don't really mean sorry. It's not like, that's like everybody comes to the altar and prays a sinner's prayer. It doesn't always mean they're serious about accepting Jesus. But if somebody is seriously saying, I repent, forgive me, you are to do what? Forgive them. Forgive others that you yourself may also be forgiven. We don't hold things against people because we don't want things held against us, right? So here it goes. So if he does this, you got to keep forgiving them. His disciples said to him, Lord, you better increase our faith then. See, this is what this whole thing's about. We usually go to verse 5. You mean if Shannon sins against me seven times, and he comes and says, Pastor, I'm sorry seven times, i got to forgive him. And this offense business, well, if that's the way you want us to live, Jesus, then you better increase our faith, <laughs> because that is not going to work. In a day... In a day, you know, folks, you think you've had a bad day? The Lord's had some bad days. He says, but you know what he has? He knows the end already. He already knows the end. You're looking at one third of his heavenly host rebelled against him. I mean, you have one third of your church, your, 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 heavenly, your heavenly force, one third of them, you know, follows a wrong leader and they get cast out of heaven. That's a bad day. But there's still, that, there's still more that with him than there ever was against him. We still have a God 
that will never quit. And he'll never quit for you. He'll never quit on you. He'll never quit on you. People quit on God, but God never quits on us. Because his word decrees that. So they said, Lord, for us to do this, you better increase our faith. And I hear people, I, I, I hear people recently uh, quoting this verse because I've read it before. And even though I've explained it, some of you already know where I'm going to go with it. I've explained it, but I still hear people saying, God, increase our faith. They're going through hard times. God, increase our faith. God, increase our faith. That's people, you know, people that don't, uh, that don't serve God intentionally. They don't serve God intentionally. Therefore, they don't have the confidence. They don't really, their heart's not really fixed on God. It's like, it's like they're wanting to get strong, but they never go to the gym. They want to get healthy, but they never watch what they eat. And, and they can't understand why their body keeps getting weaker because they don't do anything to change it. See, if we can get a natural understanding tied to this, we can, we can see. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way naturally. So why do you think it's going to work that way spiritually? And they keep saying, God, increase our faith. He says, no, here's how it works. Faith is as a grain of mustard seed. He didn't say, oh, you need faith the size of a mustard seed. He said, faith is as a grain of mustard seed. Now, there's one thing you know you've heard preached People have preached it. It didn't matter if you're Methodist, you're Baptist, you're Pentecostal, if you're just evangelicals. It's always been proven that the mustard seed is the smallest seed. Even Mark said, even though the mustard seed is the smallest of all seeds, when it is planted, it grows up. So we understand that. Another thing I learned, I don't know if they can do it now. At the time I heard it, they said that you can't, you cannot take a mustard seed and mix it with another seed and make it a hybrid. It is what it is. You can't mix it. That means you can't mix anything else with faith. It's got to stay pure. So faith is as a grain of mustard seed. Look what it said. Faith is, he says, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, this sycamore tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted into the sea, and it will, it would obey you. It would obey you. That, it didn't say it might obey you. You may get it to work, and it may not. If you do this, it will obey you. This is the confidence that we have in him. If you ask anything according to his word, we know that he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we know that we have the petitions granted that we desire of him. If our hearts condemn us not, then we have confidence towards God, whatever we we ask we receive of him we've got to get into that whatever we ask we receive but there is some prerequisites that we can't miss that is faith comes by hearing hearing, and hearing by the word of God it all comes by hearing you know I've lost probably 150 pounds maybe 200 now I've never, I've never weighed over one over two twenty five that I know of two twenty seven, and I mean at two twenty five two twenty seven I was as drained I was drained all the time, but I've lost probably two hundred pounds twenty five pounds at a time. I dropped twenty five thirty. I'd work as hard as I could to get back on twenty five and thirty. I'd drop 25 and 30, and I'd be diligent to put 25 and 30 back on. That's 50. I'd drop 25, 30, and I'd be diligent to put it back on. I'd watch what I eat. I'd work out, and it'd just peel off. And then I'd quit watching what I was doing, quit working out, and it just built back up. It builds back up quicker than it peels off. It was easier in the 30s and 40s. This mid-past 50 thing, it's a little more, it doesn't peel as quick. Huh? They solidify. (laughs) But anyway, what gets you there when you're really serious is how you treat your body and what you allow in your mouth. That's what does it, amen? If you want to have strong faith and you want to be strong spiritually, It's how you treat your spirit, man, and what you allow in your spiritual life. Come on. You are what you 
eat most of the time. Amen? I realized I could not live, man shall not live on donuts alone. I've tried it. Amen? And I found out the other day, I thought donuts were made in America. And I realized the whole time they were made in Greece. Thank you, Paul. I know that. <laughs> Scott was thinking, not again. I've heard that all week. <laughs> but anyway, man can't live on that alone. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen? Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So, Lord, increase our faith. He says, no, son. I can't increase your faith. Faith is as a grain of mustard seed. Even though it's the smallest seed, it's useless unless it's sown. But when you take that little seed and you sow it in your heart, every word is a seed. When you take that seed and sow it, it'll germinate. It'll begin to grow. And Mark says, even though it's the smallest of all seeds, when it grows up, grows up. Not when it's just planted. When it grows up, it becomes greater than all the herbs, greater than all the trees, that even the birds can come and find refuge in it, can lodge in it. So what he's saying is, if you allow your faith or the word of God just to say, stay small in you, it doesn't produce. But when you plant it and it grows up, now it becomes a powerful force. So if you want to continue to speak to things, and speak to mountains and command things to be plucked up by the root and be cast into the sea. You've got to treat this word like seed. I said this a long time ago. If farmers treated their seed the way some Christians treat this seed, the world would starve to death. They'd starve to death. We've got to reverence the word of God. And we've got to put it in us on purpose. I'd come in in the mornings and... Uh, I'd smell coffee. Scott always comes in and makes coffee. Scott starts early. He gets everything ready for Janine and I. We make sure. You know, you got to have a forerunner. You know, he gets in there. And I come in and I tease him. Oh, caught you red-handed. Reading the Bible. I caught you. I caught you. And I just say, just go ahead and finish up. But the truth is, this has got to become part of our life. It's become part of our life. I know this angel. I say this because I sleep with her. I've many times she'll wake up, can't go back to sleep. And many times, almost every time, I'll roll over and I'll hear preaching on her phone. She'll turn the word of God on as she goes back to sleep. One time she said, I went downstairs. I didn't want to disturb you. It don't disturb me. Just stay there and listen to it. Just stay there and listen to it. And uh, I said, you're listening to me preach, right? No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) No. She'll listen to that. Why? If you're going to be awake, especially if something's bothering you, you might as well fill yourself with the word and allow it to remove fears, doubts, and anxieties. So what I'm saying is, Don't just listen to the preaching of it and thinking you're going to walk with some robust faith and can command mountains and sycamine trees to be moved. Or I'm going to, you know, have this confidence that whatever I ask it shall be done. This word, one word from God is what changes our life. When this word gets down in our heart and it grows and grows, it will produce such strong faith that it will override the fears of your mind and it will produce victory in your situation. But you've got to allow this seed to germinate. You've got to allow it to develop. You've got to meditate on it. You've got to mutter it. You've got to speak it. And I think when we, we as a body of Christ here and around the world understand this is not just a Bible. This is God's word that has the ability to grow big inside of us. So then we speak it, 
it penetrates out of our mouth like a two-edged sword. Amen. The word of God is sharp and powerful like a two-edged sword. It works that way and it comes out of your mouth. But you gotta keep it, but you gotta keep your edge sharp as well. Amen. Amen. This is the confidence. Say it with me. This is the confidence that I have in him. If I ask anything according to his word. According to his what? If you're not in it, how do you know if you're asking according to it? Amen. Anything according to his word. Then I know that I have those things that I petition him for. Amen. That's what you want to have that. Because we don't want to just speak words that's, that's empty. Words are containers. They're either filled with life or they carry death. Words are containers. So whatever you put in that container, that's what it produces. I want to put faith in that. I want to put life in it. I want to put victory in that in containers called words. And I want it to produce in my life and I want it to produce in your life. Amen? Amen? All right, come on, let's stand.